Okay. I was going to do a live stream tonight. I was going to do, um, try and disprove the tides, the moon controlling the tides. But anyway, I wasn't able to. It was too overcast and I thought about doing it, but I thought if I really want to be able to see the moon and, you know, watch the tide come in and that sort of thing. So film it and, yeah, do it, yeah, properly. But anyway... I decided I'll do this. Um, <clears throat> I remember... I remember Jaren. I really like Jaren. Um, and it just pains me a little bit that he has, has a bit of a problem with Jehovah. So I want to I wanted sort of help him and other people that are thinking that Jehovah is unjust. And so... I'm going to go through Exodus um, and just explain it a little. Just uh, maybe help help them to understand, um, to see it from maybe a different angle. Okay, well, I'll start it with this introduction. But while millions are literally starving to death, Many millions more are far more seriously experiencing death-dealing spiritual famine. Jehovah caused his prophet Amos to foretell this in Jehovah's name. Look, I will send a famine into the land, a famine not for bread, and a thirst not for water, but for hearing the words of Jehovah. Yet, at the same time, he has given strong encouragement to his own people while sounding this warning through Isaiah to those of Satan's system. Look, my own servants will eat, but you yourselves will go hungry. Look, my own servants will drink, but you yourselves will go thirsty. Look, my own servants will rejoice, but you yourselves will suffer shame. How is he making this possible? And what must we do to share in the joy of his provision for the preservation of life in time of famine? This drama deals with Joseph, the son of Jacob, in his role as preserver of life. Not only as savior of his brothers and their father, but also as preserver of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. The real-life drama of Joseph and his brothers has a striking parallel in our day. As you observe Joseph's undeserved treatment by his brothers, his tests and trials in a foreign land, along with his proved integrity and unshaken faith in Jehovah, and when you see how it all turned out for them, have in mind its application in our own lives and in Jehovah's purpose today. How can you say, Reuben, that Joseph is not trying to find favor in the eyes of Jacob? No. Has not Jacob shown all the years of Joseph's life that he loves him more than all of us, his other sons? That's true, Simeon. But see for yourself, Reuben. Why did Israel oh, make for damn. Joseph a long striped shirt-like garment? Is he not the ah. son of his old age? You speak out of resentment, Dan. You're still smart from the bad report that Joseph brought to our father when you happened to be tending the sheep. You're taking advantage of your own father. Well, You're a fool, Issachar, and you too, Reuben. Would you bow before Joseph? I Would you uphold this, this, this ambitious dreamer of dreams and ask all of us and you yourself to get down on our knees before oh, Joseph? You Are you Issachar. ready to bow? Have you forgotten so quickly the dream Joseph has just related to us? Here we were, he said, binding sheaves in the middle of the field when my sheath got up and stood erect. And here your sheath proceeded to encircle and bow down to my sheath. Ha! Only in the dream-filled mind of Joseph would my sheath ever bow down to his. Our patience is strained to the limit, Reuben. Act now as firstborn, or those of us who are next in line will certainly not wait upon you. Now he's alone here in the wilderness. Let's kill him and pitch him into one of the water pits. Listen, my brothers. Hear my plan. What, Simeon? We'll certainly strip his shirt-like coat from off him, yes. slaughter a male goat, yes. and repeatedly dip the long garment in the blood and send yes. it back to our father. Yes. Yes. This way we can tell him 
Examine, please, uh, whether it's your son's long garment or not. Yes. yes. Certainly Israel will accept the evidence that a vicious yes. wild beast will accept is surely will accept you don't believe that? pieces. That's a do good not plan. spill blood. Kill him now. Pitch him into the water pit. Quiet, Ruben. But do not lay a violent hand upon him. Quiet, Ruben. Now's the time. He's getting close. Scatter out, brothers. Don't make him suspicious. Yes. You, 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 brothers. I bring you peace from you our father. You lie. No. It's to spy upon us that you've That's come. Right. Do not do this bad thing, my brothers, and bring down the gray hairs of our father Israel Quite. to shield. I say kill him now. Yes, yes. kill him. Pitch him into the water pit. Let him now. die Shiva for will his, become dreams. Of his dreams. No, my brothers, no. Do not spill blood. He must Quiet. die. Let us pitch him into the water pit, and then we can decide. Why? There's a caravan. Where? Traveling on the road to Egypt. I don't see it. Over there. Over there. It looks like an Ishmaelite caravan. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Would you buy something from the Messicar? Yeah. Come, and let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. Sell him? And do not let our hand be upon him. Uh, After all, he is our brother, our flesh. Why sell him? Why not, Simeon? Let's sell him. You speak well, Judah. Why should his blood come to be upon our heads? Naphtali, you're the one that's fleet of foot. Run to the Ishmaelites. Tell him that we have business with well, him. Well, at least we'll be rid of him. And he'll be as good as dead. Good. Come. Now we'll draw Joseph up out of the water. Good. Come, Issachar. So car. that we might sell him to the traders. Good. Bring up the dreamer. We'll sell him. Look. Let him be a slave. Here come the merchants. Now, brothers, let me deal with them. Very well, Asher. You talk to them. Hmm. Slave, you say? And who is he, and where is he from? Oh, never mind. He'll bring you a good price in No, Egypt. my brothers, no. Do not do this bad Quiet, thing. Quiet, Damer. Have mercy, my brothers. Mercy, he says. Have ha. mercy. No one who would rule over us. He's young. He's just a boy. Well, why, of course he's young. Are you buying toothless old men for slaves, Ishmaelite? See how strong he is, and he has spirit. You well know that Syrian slaves are highly valued in Egypt. He'll be a prince among slaves. Just look at him. Well, perhaps for ten silver ten pieces. Ten silver pieces? Come, friend. You'd make us a laughing stock. He'll bring you forty silver pieces. The nobles of Egypt will outbid each other. Very well. Twenty pieces of silver, and no more. Are you agreed, my brothers? Yes. That's so good. good. That's what good. have you done, my brothers? We've sold you. What have you That's done? That's what have done, oh, Prince of oh. Just as your souls have been great in my eyes, so may my soul be great in the eyes of Jehovah, that he may deliver me out of all distress. What's happened is... He, um... Joseph gets sold... They end up selling him to an a, a Egyptian, uh, Potiphar, and Potiphar um, ends up putting him over the whole household, giving him governance, making him his second. Um, so he was the highest-ranking slave in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar went away. And while he was away, um, Potiphar's wife would try and make advancements towards him and he would deny her and deny her and um, eventually she got him she called him in inside while she was in there alone and while he was in there she tried to you know have her way with him and he got away from her by you know worming his way out of his coat and left it with her so then when Potiphar turned up she told Potiphar um, that he tried to seduce her and here's his garment sort of as proof and Potiphar went crazy and had him locked away and he ended up in the dungeon in um, the prison house of Egypt and anyway <laughs> because he was a good man and Jehovah was with him um, the prison keeper, the guard keeper the prison house um, ended up putting him over all the prisoners and so he was r running the prison as well because he had such fine standings and was just an upright, um, trustworthy man, obviously. And also the the rest of the household of Potiphar and I would say basically everybody, <laughs> maybe even the jailer, the the, um, the guard keeper, 
knew that he hadn't done this to Potiphar's wife um, because Potiphar's, yeah, his whole family, you already know, his whole household already knew all these other slaves and everybody else. Um, so um, this was related to Pharaoh because Pharaoh was trying to have dreams interpreted. Now, he was told that this Joseph in the dungeon had related um, to the cupbearer and um, oh, another another servant of Pharaoh. And they were both sent to the dungeon at the same time. And um, they both had dreams. They both related their dreams to Joseph and Joseph um, explained their dreams to them and told them that the cupbearer, I'm pretty sure it was, would be returned to his position under Pharaoh and the other one would lose his position. I think he was actually even, would, would be killed and all this came to fruition. Anyway, so the cupbearer was telling this to Pharaoh and Pharaoh subsequently had Joseph called to see if he could interpret his dream. Well, he did. He interpreted his dream perfectly. Um, it was uh, seven ears, healthy ears of, of grain um, were devoured by seven shriveled up unhealthy ears and f seven cows, lame cows and skinny, you know, decrepit cows ate up seven um, fit and healthy cows and the cows that ate them up didn't even then show any um, you know they didn't put on any weight they still looked the same shriveled and whatnot and what and he related the the dreams to Pharaoh and told him that they meant seven years of plenty and seven years of famine and that the seven years of famine would eat up the the produce from the seven years of plenty so Pharaoh um, called, put him, um, <laughs> evidently again, um, under himself and put him over all of Egypt, all of Egypt, um, put him in control of everything. He was the head man. They called him Zaphonaf Panir and, um, he started to go around and have the grain, um, stored and, the seven years they were well the first year was um, the grain was huge and healthy and there was lots of it and um, there was a lot of surplus and all this sort of stuff so they started to store it up store it up and after a few years they'd stored up so much they st they stopped counting it because it was without number that doesn't mean that you know it doesn't mean it was endless obviously it means it, it probably means that the Egyptian numbers don't go any higher than what they had counted up to and so they had to stop <laughs> and just keep filling yeah okay so then um, the seven years of famine come and people start to come from all over Egypt and even outside of Egypt, the whole known world, they say the whole world, but it means the whole known world, um, which is basically basically the Middle East there. Yeah. Um, and anyway, they all came from all different places and, and bought grain and whatnot. And in that time, so did Joseph's brothers um, coming to buy grain for their families and for their father, who's... Um, Jacob and uh, Isaiah no Israel Israel yeah that's where the name Israel comes from because um, as you probably realize the sons of Israel are the tribes the names of the tribes the ten tribes uh, this twelve um, anyway um, so he um what happens is people come to him and say, look, um, we don't have any more money left. What are we going to do? Because all we have is livestock. When we give you our livestock, we'll have nothing left except our land and our lives. And um, he turns around to them and says, look, what we're going to do is um, when it comes to that, we've already made provisions for you to stay in Egypt. 
so they'd made um, housing for them, basically. And um, he said, so you'll stay here during the rest of the famine. And so you won't have to travel, obviously. He said, and then when the famine's over, you return to your, to your lands. But you will... Oh, excuse me. But you will then give me one-fifth... You give Pharaoh one-fifth of your grain of... Yeah? Okay. And you keep the other f four parts for yourself. Um, and in doing that, Pharaoh will there buy, therefore own all that land. You should stand it right up past Canaan and, and all that, yeah? Um, anyway, so in doing that, he eventually bought all that land for Egypt, yeah, for the Pharaoh, so, and acquired it all. Um, so, so in doing that, what happened in the end was with his brothers, he eventually lets them know because he sends them back with their money and keeps one of their brothers. Uh, I can't remember which one. Um, and anyway, then um, he says, when you come back, because he knows they're going to, they're going to run out. And when you come back, you have to bring your youngest brother, uh, Benjamin Benoni. Um, because he and Joseph were actual brothers. They had the same mother. And the other ten brothers had different mothers, yeah? Anyway. Um, yeah, so he set them up and put... When they brought the younger brother back and he sent them all back to go back to their father, he set them up and put his silver cup um, in the younger brother's sack. Um, and then they left and then sent, they sent, um, sent, you know, people after them to track them down and then had them brought back because of the cup because they found it in the youngest one's bag. And then they said, well, he's going to stay here. He's my slave now. And they said, oh, we can't do that. The, you know, my, um, our father Israel said, if anything happens to Benjamin, surely it'll bring my gray hairs down to Sheol. And, um, he will die, and and then Joseph just he breaks down and just goes, "It's me, it's me, Joseph. I'm your brother." And they're like, "What?" And then they freak out. They think, "Oh no, Jehovah's, you know, gonna punish us. Surely Joseph is gonna get us back." Joseph's like, "No, no, no. It's it's fine." And he says, "Go bring your families, bring my father and everyone back here." And that happens. Okay. Um. So, what in what happening in happening that in what happened there? Sorry, blah, 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 is um, is Pishon in? It's the northern part of Egypt, and it's the most luscious part of Egypt. It's the nicest bit of land that was given to Joseph and his family for them to have. Well, there then they started to grow and they outgrew the Egyptians. They became the most numerous people there. Um, and then they became a new pharaoh because the old pharaoh, because he had witnessed Jehovah, you can see in the Bible that he comes around, obviously, and, and it, well, I'd say Egypt was a God-fearing place at that time. But then that pharaoh died and a new pharaoh came along who didn't know Jehovah, didn't know Joseph, didn't know anything about what had happened. And he saw that the Israelites were growing in number and he said, well, that's no good. Um, they could rise up against us and, you know, take us out. There's more of them than us. So he, he ordered that all the firstborn sons be killed so that only there could be daughters and the daughters could only have babies to Egyptians or other people but not Israelites therefore they would it would break them sort of thing you know by mixing or or um, even just abating um, their ability to have um, offspring and um, of their own and of their bloodline and so what happened was the midwives didn't really want to do it so they didn't do it 
and Faro noticed and he said, what's going on? And the midwife said, look, because they're more lively than Egyptian women, before we can even come into them, um, they've already had the baby. So we sort of can't do anything about it. And then Pharaoh just went, nah, that's it, and ordered that all male babies will be killed. And that's just it. Just will be killed and drowned. like. And so there what happened, that went on for a while, and obviously um, it had been happening... And it was a very well-known thing because it. Um, by the time Moses was born, um, his mother knew that he would be found and killed. So she put him in a made a basket, a reed basket, um, and put it in the river and hid him in the basket. Well, Pharaoh's daughter found the basket, found um, Moses, and realized this is a Hebrew child so um she's turned around and gone um gone oh send for sent got her um hebrew slaves to go and get a hebrew woman to look after the child well they've gone and got the mother they've gone and got moses's mother and moses's mother ends up raising being the nanny for her own child how great is that and at the same time Moses is raised in Pharaoh's household under Pharaoh's protection. Um, but then he he does the wrong thing. He, he kills somebody and he runs away anyway. Um, Pharaoh doesn't want, Pharaoh wants to hurt him. So he runs away and he goes to Horab um, and marries a Midianite woman. And then he ends up, he's a, he becomes a herder and he ends up uh, at Mount Horeb where he meets the burning bush and speaks to Jehovah and then goes to Egypt to start the exodus. Okay. Now, something's happened in this time. Okay. Because, see, Moses, when Moses was born, there was not allowed to be any male children born to the Hebrews. But when the exodus is happening, they put blood on their posts and the doorposts for the Passover so that the angel will pass over their house and not, not, um, not kill their firstborn sons. So therefore, they've got firstborn sons. I don't know whether they're older than Moses or they're young and of different ages but it would it would make you think that there was younger firstborn sons of the Hebrews well anyway so that's what's going on here so you see the night of the Passover it's one night and it's one generation I would say um, and you've got to realize that Moses was like 40 or something I think he was about 40 when he re when he returned no when he left when he left so when he left no there was no Hebrew male firstborns from when he was born up until then at least and obviously I would say before that because his mother already had the idea that it was serious enough to hide him and I don't know how long after that because there's obviously firstborns that are need, needing protection under the um, sprinkling, sprinkling of the lamb's blood yeah but the thing is, Jehovah was known throughout Egypt, okay, and he was known, obviously, and worshipped by a lot of Egyptians. Now, I don't know if that's a fact, but I know it's a fact after the fact, <laughs> because when the Exodus takes place and they leave in the middle of the night, many Egyptians and others turn around to the Hebrews and say, we want to worship your God and we want to come with you. So there's like seven, is it? 
was like a hundred seven hundred thousand um able bodied men plus children, women and elderly. Okay. And it says a a group of non Hebrews, others, okay? I don't know whether you would count them as all the children, women and elderly, but they only number the men, the healthy men. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of people. Um, but the point is here, okay, what's my point? <laughs> the point is, if you read the Bible account, that Pharaoh doesn't have a name. It's not in any Bible records. It's not in any um, ancient original manuscripts. It's not in anything. His name is not known. It's like it was scrubbed out or left out. Now I'm not, and and it's not just the Bible. This is where it, it takes a nice little twist, which shows you the mindset of even the people who were inflicted by Jehovah. The mindset of those people in that day. Because what it, what happens is there's an, the Egyptians account of the ex, Exodus story and it is basically word for word. It's a um, confirmation of the same story of Exodus, of that story of Exodus. It is exactly the same. They are one and the same. But they are also the same in one other unique way, and that is that they also don't have Pharaoh's name. And it's not like someone's going to chisel it out, like they put it in, but then they chiseled it out. No, they left it out. Um, after that Exodus... It looks like even the Egyptians turn on the Pharaoh and there's no more f like the Egyptian story doesn't sort of keep going then it, it sort of goes over to the Greeks and the Romans um, so I sort of feel like because of the Exodus story we're missing a little bit and I think that little bit we're missing is that Maybe the pharaohs were done away with then. Maybe the practicing priests and whatnot were done away with then. And maybe all that sort of stuff happened then where the people went, no, we're not going to slay for you anymore. We're going to be free under Jehovah. Okay? And I think that happened. Um, it seems to have as in the authority of Egypt sort of pitted out there after that. And um, also the fact that his name's been left out of everything. It's, it's one thing like if you had pharaohs throughout time where every now and then one would be left out or maybe just one other, but for only this one to be, and it to be left out in that Exodus story. Whoa. Oh, there's probably even another... Like, he has probably got a pyramid or something. <laughs> and it's probably not there, you know. It's, they probably tore it down. Um, maybe that's why they started wrecking the pyramids and everything. Maybe that's why they are disheveled. Maybe the, the people just went, no more respect. Yeah, you don't know. We don't know. But they weren't as mighty as they were when when the English got there. When the Greeks took over. So, yeah. But the thing is, they had a tyrant ruling over them. They were living in tyranny. Okay? They couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't leave. They couldn't do anything. 
Nothing to do wander around in the desert. Oh, hang on. They did that. But they didn't have Jehovah with them, see? Because they hadn't cried out. But then once their ch children, or their sons, started to be killed, they started to cry out to Jehovah. And that's what the Bible says. And he heard them. So he came to them. Okay? Now, he came to them as a saviour. The Egyptians had their gods. They chose their gods, okay? Unfortunately, they chose false gods with no power. And the Hebrews called upon the true God. And he does have power. And he does protect those he loves. He does... Um, he does um, have no um, regrets about um, standing up for those who are willing to stand by him. Those who are willing to give him credit for what he does. Like, you know, that's basically all he wants. Recognition. If if any one of you out there could make this, make this construct, make anything like this, okay, without using anything of Jehovah's, just your own abilities coming from you, not you manipulating anything he made, then yeah, I'd be impressed too, and I'd be singing your praises too, and saying how great you are. But that's not the way it is. He did it. And all he says, all he's asking for is recognition, and that you treat each other nicely. What's wrong with that? I don't see why people have a problem with it. These people were passing their children through the fire to Molak and, and stuff. Like, these aren't good people. No, I understand that he could punish them or whatever, and or or whatever you you're thinking, but he's given them free will. Okay. He gave them free will. Then he gave them many chances, and he asked them many times, "Please let let them go so they can worship me." And all he wanted was to be worshipped. And Pharaoh said no ten times. Okay, nine times maybe. But he just kept saying no. He used his free will. Okay. Jehovah tells us he, he gave his free will. It's ours to use. Okay. But he also tells us that our choices... The choices we make with our free will can condemn us. See, because we, in, in gaining the fruit of the knowledge of good and bad, that's what it means. We are flesh, and the flesh is weak. We're not, we're not spirits. We're not... Um, we're, uh, God made us a paradise, put us in it, and and we're supposed to just be happy. He didn't make us like um, the angels where we had jobs to serve him. Yeah? And obviously the angels have free will too, or else they wouldn't be able to rebel. Okay? He hasn't, he hasn't locked everybody down, and he could have. And yeah, you're right. That would be better, but isn't that what we're fighting against? Aren't we fighting against this slavery? Isn't this what we're against? Flat Earth? It's not slavery under God. It's a choice. It's a way of life. I, I can't understand what people... I do understand why people are so against it. It's because they think good is bad and bad is good. It's just this world. It's just this system. It's just made like that. Satan's made it so that everything becomes twisted and 
eventually you only wear black yeah you get your hair cut a certain way you start looking at yourself a bit longer in the mirror you know you start spending a bit more money on yourself you start you know talking about yourself a bit more this is haughtiness boastfulness ego we are flesh we're not supposed to know this it's our flesh is weak we can handle love we can handle goodness we weren't made for this we weren't made to know this we weren't made to die we weren't made to feel pain we weren't made to hurt we weren't made to be mean we weren't made to kill we weren't made to even hate or dislike or be upset we weren't made with those qualities Jehovah made us to reflect him okay Jehovah doesn't act unjust he knows all that knowledge the knowledge of good and evil but he is love okay he was trying to make us without any of that having to be part of it now the tree being there is well he gave us the whole earth and said just leave me that one tree and we couldn't do that but you still you have to understand also that the the flesh is weak jehovah left um and rested on on the seventh day a day for jehovah is a thousand years satan would have been watching and learning Eve's ways so that he knew by the time he decided to act he knew the best way to do it to manipulate her he was cunning sly says that about him he was the most cunning of them all so he probably waited till Jehovah was about ready to turn back up after resting before he tried it he would have honed his skills yeah like today he's got it down to a fine art you know children turn into sinners without even knowing and not even um, being aware that it is that it is bad it, it's a sin not even aware of it they think they're floating through space and there is no God you know that's the whole point about that it's not it's not it's not unjust it's just so Satan worked on Eve he didn't work on Adam why didn't he work on Adam because Adam was given the commandment from Jehovah okay Jehovah didn't tell Eve Jehovah didn't tell Eve not to eat from the tree you understand that don't you how do you know that Jehovah didn't tell Eve to eat from the tree? Because Jehovah gave Eve to Adam and made Eve um, in subjection to Adam, Adam. So therefore, Adam was Eve's teacher. If Jehovah went around giving Eve, um, telling her what to do and stuff, then she wouldn't be in subjection to Adam, would she? So Adam was to teach her. Adam was to guide her. Adam was... He was her he was the one over her 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 um guider her her see so we would say the head of the household sort of thing but no he was her guider okay it was his job to teach her the wonderful things jehovah had given him and you know because you got to realize when he made adam he then was bringing adam the animals to name you know how many animals there are you know how long that would have taken yeah maybe another thousand years okay so Adam had seen a lot and learnt a lot and probably talked a lot with Jehovah had a great relationship and everything so then when Eve came along he had a lot to show her 
Yeah? So she was like a child. She was learning. Okay? She hadn't... She didn't have the... Um... The great chance that... That um, Adam had in being taught straight from Jehovah. But that was because of Jehovah's love for Adam in giving him Eve in subjection to him. So she was solely in subjection to him. Do you know what I mean? She was his. So therefore, when they became one and they were yoked together, it wasn't like um, it was Jehovah's toy and Adam was allowed to play with it. It was Adam's. She was Adam's. Satan ruined it by getting Eve to sin. Okay? Now, Jehovah told Adam what would happen from eating from the tree. So, Adam probably committed suicide. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but if you think about it seriously, he knew what was going to happen to him. But the thing was, he knew what was going to happen to Eve. And he'd been given Eve. She was his. You know, it's he. Do you know what I mean? So for him to eventually give in and eat with her, it might have, must have been hard for him, but at the same time, you, you have to see where, like, look at our human trait. You know? Rather than give something up, there's a lot of people out there instead of rather than give something up they'd rather kill it yeah so in the same sort of sense rather than lose Eve Adam thought well he'll suffer the same fate therefore he doesn't really have any time away from her does he but then once kicked out of the garden um, like Jehovah said that she will be she will yearn for him and he will um, dominate her. It changed. And that's only because of the knowledge they had gained from the fruit. You know? So do you sort of see? You see where it comes from? I hope it um, puts it a bit more in perspective for you. Because it's really sad that people blame Jehovah. He's been deceived, man. And for him to step in, okay, for him to step in and just say, look, stop, and not let us, you know, and stop people from doing bad things, because people say all the time, why does Jehovah, let, or why does God let bad things happen? Yeah, granted, he lets them happen, but he doesn't cause them. And letting something happen doesn't mean you're unjust. It means that You are just, really, it does. It means you are just. Because you might have heard in one of my other videos, I've spoken about the same thing. If Jehovah is to step in, then he's taken away your free will, and that is not just. But for him to turn around and take it away later from those um, who were cast into the lake of fire, it is just. Because he's told us what's going to happen, he's given us the rules. He's let us know that we need to follow the rules, change our lifestyles, and try and be the people that he made us, even though we have this um, horrible infliction of knowing this knowledge, horrible dark side knowledge, um, to come back to him anyway. And if you do that, he will change you. He will. Maybe not now but in his system he'll change you he'll take away this knowledge we will forget it it does say that these things will not come up into our into our hearts anymore and if he'll wipe away all of our tears then we won't even remember the painful things okay so he's going to take it away okay you need yeah I know it's easy to point the finger at him when he's not here to to back himself up but he is you've just got to read his reply I know his reply was written a long time before your question but he has an answer and the worst thing is that 
a lot of you people are just gonna not bother. And that's sad. Because if you make it to Armageddon and you haven't, then you don't get a resurrection. And I'll never get the chance to meet you. That sucks. There's a chance I'll meet Hitler and not you. Because it'll be a resurrection of good and evil men. But if you make it to Armageddon and you live through all the signs, it still, it still sucks. But you have to know now what are the good things a lot of people are doing, especially in the truth movement, trying to get the truth out of people. You know? If you turn to Jehovah, he will help you. He will show you more than just the little bits around the sides. He will show you the guts. I promise you. Just ask him. He can't do anything for you unless you ask him. If he does anything for you without you asking, then he's doing it against your free will. And he won't do that. So you have to ask. Please, please just ask. So ask him to show you the truth. Ask him to show you why you don't understand him. Whatever, whatever is in your way, just ask him to show you why or ask him to help you with it or something. I don't know, but at least try. Give him a chance. You can't just reject him if, you know, you, and you can't reject him because you followed Catholic, the Catholic Church or, or, or a false religion. Or because you read the Bible and disagreed with it, because you read it through your eyes and through this system's ears. Okay. Sorry, it just upsets me a lot. But yeah, it's not it's not unjust, and those people that have died and that that died from actions of Jehovah's um, being a saviour to people that love him and that call on him. The thing is, if there's going to be a resurrection of good and evil men, then those people will probably be resurrected. Maybe. I don't know, but probably... So, when you know that it's not like they've taught us, because that's why a lot of people reject God, because they think of, they think there's a hell. They think that he, he actually does that stuff. No. No way. I guarantee you, every person that has died because of Jehovah's inter intervening didn't suffer. It's probably really quick and you know anyway I don't know but yes I thought I'd just have to explain that there was a lot more happening to the firstborns of the Israelites than there was to the firstborns of the Egyptians okay and you just need to put it more into perspective rather than just focus on one point and from the from the um, from the act of of what happened to Pharaoh the chariots um, the firstborns and all the plagues because of all that all those other kingdoms that they went into some of them gave themselves up and became part of the Israelites. Okay? And 
um, most of them were scared. The people were already scared. They, because they had already heard about the Egyptians, and that was the whole point of that. Was so his name would be heard and and spoken and and yeah. So it would be known across the land, so that when his people came, people knew who they were representing and who they were marching behind. Okay, that's why it was done that way and you know, in such a traumatic thing. But anyway, I've got to talk a little bit more about the uh, Exodus too at one stage because even in my Bible, like my Bible's a good Bible, um, it has Jehovah's name, it, it's a literal translation and it has Jehovah's name returned to it in every spot that it it shows in the um, original um, Hebrew and Greek scripture, scriptures that it comes from. So it's exactly the same as King James and everything, except um, in the places where it's supposed to say Jehovah and instead it says Adonai or Lord or God, um, it actually says Jehovah's name where it's supposed to. So that's what's it. It's over 2,000 times been returned to its original places. And that's why I use it because it's a literal translation, okay. Um, and that's the biggest point, like that most people don't realize. His name, okay. He is trying to just get us to know his name. It's easier for us to have a personal relationship if we know him. See, um, and the amount of times he's tried, yeah. He keeps trying his son the Hebrews with his son um, and today they're blocking it again hiding it but you can you can go to the dictionary any dictionary nearly any dictionary every, every dictionary I've picked up anyway because it's the first thing I look up um, you look up the name Jehovah and I'll, I'll read it to you It says, Jehovah, Old Testament, the personal name of God revealed to Moses on Mount Horeb. Exodus 3, uh, YH, VH, and Yahweh. And I've got a Oxford, oh, that dictionary was a uh, Collins uh, English dictionary. And this one's at Oxford, and it says, Jehovah, God, the name of God, used in the Old Testament, erroneously formed uh, YHVH, the in, ineff, ineff, ineffable name of God, and the vows of Anadonai, Hebrew, my Lord. Um, in Hebrew, it equals my Lord. The word and Adonai does not Jehovah, which was uh, substituted for it in the reading, uh, in the reading that in reading the Hebrew Bible. There you go. They substituted um, the word Jehovah or YHVH, which means He who causes to become. And they changed it into yeah into a donor, which means my lord in the Hebrew Bible. Okay, so they try to hide it from you for a long, long time. So by the time it got to around now, everyone thinks that that's that he doesn't have a name or whatever his name is God. Um, and they've also made it so that when you hear his name, you recoil and laugh and make jokes and. Yeah, like people do all the time. Look at the Jehovah's Witnesses. People only mention their names and, you know, or they knock on the door and people swear and yell at them. Or um, someone knock on the door and go, that's not the Jehovah's Witnesses, is it? Or people will be joking and knock on the door and say, Jehovah's Witness calling. You know, it's a joke. It's a joke. And it's just to make you think they're idiots and, you know, flat earthers. 
It's basically all it is. And it's not because of the people. Obviously, they're beautiful people if you've met any of them. Um, the best people you'll ever meet, actually. Um, and what's what was I saying? Yeah, and Jehovah. <laughs> Read the Bible. It says right there. His people will be hated because of his name. You just have to... And I know, and I'll never stop using his name. But I know a lot of people don't like to use it. Uh, I see a lot of people just go to... They, they'll mention God and then they'll have to say, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not... Don't don't think this is a religious video or anything. Or, um, yeah, they have to, like, explain that, you know, so that people don't turn their videos off. Well, that's not very good. <laughs> Just say it. Who cares? Bugger them. You know, it's... What a better person to be shunned for. Bring it on. Love it. Don't love it. I'd rather people, you know, want to be around. But if, you know, if it has to be that way... Um, well, apparently that's how you'll be recognised, so... Apparently, you'll be recognised as... Well, you are one of Jehovah's people, and that's fine. It's fine by me. Great reward for uh, being treated like that. I don't mind. At all. It's great. And, yeah. No. No matter how much someone can hate you, you just... Just love them more than they could even hate you. That's all. <laughs> anyway. Sorry I got a bit emotional. But yeah, I love you guys. <laughs> and yeah, I already missed some years. Some years I ain't gonna make it. And unfortunately, a lot of people that aren't gonna make it have already been through a bad time here. And then, yeah, they don't even give themselves a chance later. Which is really sad. So they never really get to taste a good life. And therefore, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully the... Oh, maybe not, I don't know. Being resurrected and to see what you're not going to get would be horrible. So I don't think that would happen. But I don't know. Anyway... Soon to be winding down a little bit here. It's uh, two thirty, so yeah. Then I'm tired. I um <laughs> actually uh, missed out on a bit of sleep last night, so I could stay up a bit longer. I was going to sleep some today, and so I st or yesterday, so I could stay up tonight to do this video. And I tried to sleep, and I couldn't. It's too noisy, and um. <laughs> yeah, I ended up <laughs> ended up staying up, so yeah, I'm pretty bugging. So yeah, anyway. Well, I'm gonna render this up. I'm just gonna put one picture to it. It's just gonna be talking. Um But you're gonna find that at the end of the video, so it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> You'll know it. <laughs> uh useless information I am tired okay people I love yous if that isn't obvious and yeah may Jehovah bless you all may you all find worthiness may you all want it if it was mine to grant bye <laughs>